As we all know, Microsoft Windows is the world's most popular desktop operating system. Literally everyone used it at least once in their life. My very first exposure to computers was my dad's old PC, which ran Windows 98. I remember that he added that weird Office 97 toolbar to quickly start Word, Excel, etc. I then had my first computer, the HP 550. It originally shipped with Pista, but yeah, it wasn't really good, so I downgraded to XP. Those were the good old days of the YouTube tutorials with Notepad, the Hypercam 2 watermark and that Dreamscape music. My second computer was the Asus VivoBook S200e, and I bought it in 2013. Yeah, that's the first date I remember of me actually getting a computer. It shipped with Windows 8, and no, I wasn't pissed off at the start screen and all of that tablet-friendly bullshit, because that computer had a touch screen, so I could feature with the tiles all day. In the following years, I upgraded to Windows 8.1, and I even had most of the very first insider builds of Windows 10 in dual boot. In 2016, I built with a friend my first desktop computer, with a very modern Pentium processor, which was worth 50 euros, and 8 gigs of RAM. With time, I upgraded the memory and added a pretty crappy GPU, and I used Windows 10 on it. You could tell that I had experience with pretty much every Windows version in existence. With time, the latest and greatest iteration of Windows kinda became more and more broken, we all know that Microsoft has been mostly carrying on adding new features and ads in the start menu rather than fixing the most critical system flaws that got even worse with updates that gave users so many complaints of losing personal files, not being able to boot into the OS anymore and heavy resources usage. There are also a lot of annoying things like Cortana which is useless as fuck. The already mentioned ads in the start menu like the ones for Candy Crush and Slipknot or whatever the hell that thing is and the updates, oh don't get me started. I personally experienced very poor performance, not only for my shitty specs, and continuous bugs, so around 2017 or 2018 I wanted to move to another operating system. I already hackintoshed, it means that I've installed the Max operating system on a normal PC with some clover trickery, my VivoBook with Sierra, and was pleased enough with the result. So I bought a 128GB SSD, put it inside my dumpster and installed High Sierra on it. At first, I didn't really like the way the desktop worked. Moving windows around felt stiff, you couldn't snap them to the size of the screen unless you buy an app called Magnet, and Siri is as useless as Cortana, but a lot less intrusive. Even though I didn't really mind the menu bar and the dock. The overall design felt modern and consistent. The columns view of the Finder was growing on me, the software availability with popular things like Microsoft Office and Adobe stuff that I really didn't use that often apart from experience design, was pretty much comparable to Windows, and the reliability was miles better than Windows 10. I was very pleased with this change, ditching the dumpster file with its registry and inconsistent UIs with this Unix-like very legally installed OS that works almost flawlessly, because being a Hackintosh the switch wasn't really smooth and easy to work on, was truly the boost I needed to stop getting angry at the computer for every little thing. In late 2019 I tried Linux for the first time on the VivoBook because even though macOS was faster than Windows it still didn't really work that well simply because that old i3 and 4GB of memory were inadequate for what I use computers for. So Linux looked like a very good option for such a shitty PC. Also I've heard very good things about Linux so I wanted to give it a try. This distro I chose was Kubuntu 19.04, because I've already heard of its desktop environment called KDE Plasma, which is very customizable, so that I could make it feel more like Windows 10, because I still preferred its UI feel to the one of the Mac. I was impressed with the amount of things that you could change, the panels and its elements, the desktop widgets which are called plasmoids, the team, the icons, the mouse pointers, the sounds, the animations, the keyboard shortcuts, heck, even the login screen. I personally wouldn't change literally everything, also because I don't like most of the customization stuff available on the KDE store, but still even Windows can't be customized this much and that easily, while on the Mac side you can't really do shit about it. To be fair, the high level of customization is not confined within KDE, it's at the core of the Linux philosophy, as I like to call it. People say that Linux is difficult to use and that the hardware support is bad, but the truth is that if you choose a distro like Ubuntu or a derivative, everything is gonna be so easy. Also, most of the drivers are integrated into the kernel itself, so 90% of the time you don't have to download and install them yourself. I'm personally not scared of the command line. I kinda started liking it for some reason, maybe it's the novelty of being the cool guy that does the hackerman by simply typing sudo apt install or startx. 
Still, the terminal is not required for using a simple Linux distro like the already mentioned Ubuntu. Anyone could pick it up and learn it with pretty much no hassle. But remember, Linux is not Windows. I'll say it again. Linux is not Windows. People that are already used to something else must change their habits to get used to the way Linux works, so there could be a rather steep learning curve, but at the end the experience is truly amazing. You have freedom of what you can have installed on your system. If you don't like something, for example some driver or the desktop environment, you can easily change it with something else. You can truly make it your own OS. Another thing that people don't like about Linux is that it doesn't have popular programs like Microsoft Office and the Adobe Suite. And that's true, only old versions can be used on Wine easily, but there are a lot of alternatives. For example, GIMP is a very capable alternative to Photoshop. Krita is an awesome drawing and painting program that lets you animate too. There's LibreOffice and other Office suites, there's really a lot of stuff to try out. Applications also feel more coherent between each other than the ones in macOS. They can be installed from some sort of app store that is included in most distros, which rely on a package manager with controlled repositories so that everything is organized and easy to update. Only recently Microsoft has introduced a package manager in Windows. Most of the time you don't need to get a program from the internet, risking to infect your system with some malware. Speaking of security, the Unix-like nature of Linux makes it truly inaccessible to malware and hackers when compared to other OSs. And because it's open source, someone could think that it's more prone to attacks rather than proprietary systems. But the truth is that the community can check for vulnerabilities and fix them almost instantly. While on Windows, for example, to fix an issue it takes Microsoft several months to make a patch and release it. Also, if you care a lot about privacy, you should never trust any proprietary operating system, not even macOS. There could be backdoors and things like that. In terms of reliability, it's at the level of the Mac, and both of them are way above Windows 10. Even the updates aren't mandatory, work faster and don't break the system. Even though I've heard that on Arch Linux if you update too often, you're likely to fuck up your installation. So I think that in 2020 most people should switch away from Windows 10, because there are these other very valid alternatives which are way better. Now you might wonder what is Microsoft doing about this? They're starting to address the issues with their operating system? Sorta. They're making a completely new OS called Windows 10X, which is mainly targeted towards single and dual screen touch devices, and they might try to target it to desktops too in future, but it looks too much like an iOS for PC, so it's going to be pretty locked up. They're also trying to embrace Linux. Yeah, I said that, embrace. This is a reference to the Microsoft from the 90s. Embrace, extend and extinguish. Their bold strategy to monopolize something. And now that a lot of time has passed since the days of Internet Explorer vs Netscape and of the Wintel computers, but it's very obvious that they're trying to fuck up Linux. They're contributing to the Linux kernel, they bought GitHub some time ago, they introduced the Windows subsystem for Linux, this name doesn't make sense but never mind, and they even said that they were wrong about Linux, but this is all bullshit to get developers to work on Windows and lock them into their ecosystem. I recommend everyone not to trust them. Anyway, I think that I've shown you enough of Linux and macOS, two amazing operating systems that are mostly superior to Windows, so I'd recommend Linux to anyone, even people that never used a computer before, because it's very reliable and flexible, also for people that like customization. But you probably need to install it yourself because PCs with Linux pre-installed are quite rare. If you need specific programs that aren't available on Linux, go with Mac. As you know, Mac computers are expensive and hackintoshing is not really an easy thing to do perfectly. I mean, if you still wanna stick with Windows, you can do that, I'm not gonna judge you. But it's a dying system to me, so everyone at some point will have to move to something else in the not so distant future. I hope you enjoyed my recommendations and I hope you didn't get offended with that huge rant against Windows. See you in the next video.